Welcome back, BC students, to video number two over topic 10.9, talking about the difference between alternating series abilities to be conditionally convergent or possibly absolutely convergent. Or we always have the uh, possibility that they diverge as well. So really, there are three different possibilities that we deal with. Now, as we ended the last video, we introduced this very cool flowchart way in order to figure out convergence and uh, divergence and absolute versus conditional convergence for these alternating series. So I want to walk you through these flowcharts and see what you think and uh, then probably use one of them to solve the two problems that I have here in example two's part A and B. So flowchart one, what you could do is you focus on the overall series and try to make a determination, okay, that series could of course diverge and if you're able to determine that, well, game over, right? You don't really have to do anything else. But if that series looks like it converges, well, then you have to make sure that you're able to distinguish between which type of convergence it demonstrates. And you would do that by looking at the absolute value of the expression, take his summation into consideration, and based on whether or not he converges or diverges means you would have absolute versus conditional. Flowchart 2, a little bit more streamlined as you can see, begins with looking at the summation of the absolute value. And then basically a fork in the road occurs. If that particular absolute value summation converges, the problem is done. Because at that point, you can state that the original series absolutely converges. However, if that summation of the absolute value diverges, then we just go back and we test the original series to see if it conditionally or uh, absolutely converges. Basically, guys, they're the same flow charts. They're just different directions. I tend to opt for flow chart two. I've taught this for many years, and I could probably tell you that about 85% or sometimes even more in a given year of my students so much prefer the flowchart two. The students that were more leaning towards flowchart one would always tell me that two makes just as much sense and they can easily adapt to that. So that's what I wanted to do with this. So let's take a look at our example, determine whether each of these series absolutely converges, conditionally converges, or are divergent. And so we start by taking the absolute value. Now, it's very likely that if this is a multiple choice question, you're certainly not going to have to be as meticulous as I am here in writing out this absolute value. But if this is a free response question, I certainly have to see that you are using the concept of the absolute value in order to answer this question. And so once we do that, we basically can break free of the alternating component, this alternator here negative 1 to the n plus 1, and it leaves us with just the square root of n over n squared plus 1. So we just have to focus on what is this guy doing? What kind of series is this? And so if you inspect this a little bit, basically what you're going to do is you're going to compare this to something. You're going to look at this and say, well, really, this series is going to behave an awfully lot like the series that gets rid of the 1 and simplifies what's left. The square root of n over n squared is just n to the 3 halves still located in the denominator's position. Now, I am not going to make you go through the full-blown comparison tests. You don't have to do the direct comparison test. You don't have to do the limit comparison test. But if you feel pretty confident that this guy here is going to converge because it is a convergent p-series, then it's very, very likely, maybe 100% likely, that this series here in blue that I'm circling converged as well. And that is exactly what's going to happen. Now, because the absolute value of the nth term expression gave us convergent behavior, that means that we're following along this path. And that means we can go right to the conclusion. And the conclusion is absolute convergence. It's that easy. 
Okay, so let's write that up. We'll say the series converges absolutely. I'll let you kind of traipse through flowchart one in reverse to see how that same idea is applied. This is certainly going to be your most, uh, maybe your favorite approach because absolute convergence is probably the easiest thing to determine. Uh, conditional convergence is a little tougher with flowchart two. I wonder what's going to happen in part B. Hmm. Well, it could, it could be conditional convergence or divergence if I want it to be different than, than A. All right, so we're going to dive into this and we're going to once again analyze what is going on with the summation as k goes from 1 to infinity of the absolute value. Notice sometimes I like to switch it up and use k's instead of n because the vast majority of the problems on the AP exam could very likely use k. I want you to get used to that. Let me move my camera up here. This thing is then going to start looking like this once the alternating component disappears. 2 to the k over k squared. I don't need the absolute values any longer, just like in the previous problem. You know, knowing that n and k start with 1, we're going to be only getting positive results. So basically, you've got to make a determination for me. What does this series do? You don't have to be real meticulous about the test. You just have to make a, a very a good uh, um, statement about what it does. Hopefully, you realize that 2 to the k is simply going to grow way faster than the k squared. So this series is certainly going to diverge. Uh, if you're wondering what test you could use, I would say the nth term test would do a great job with this. Uh, but by and large, you you never have to write down what test you're using to determine uh, these preliminary findings unless the directions state. You know, if you see something like on my test, be sure to state every test that you use throughout your solution. Then you've got to be a little bit more meticulous. But the AP exam may not be quite as specific. All right, so what does that mean if we go back up to our flowchart too? We are traveling down this path now, and that means that we test the original series to see if it's going to be conditionally convergent or absolutely. Well, I'm sorry, to see if we're going to be conditionally or if we truly will stay with this divergent behavior. We've lost absolute, and that's one thing I wanted to make sure that you're aware of. We have completely lost any chance of being absolutely convergent. Game over for that. Okay, well, how do we go about doing this? Well, again, we have an alternating series. Let's use the alternating series test. So we're going to look back at the original series. And again, it kind of seems silly to write it out again because it's already on the page, and I, I get that. If you don't write this out and you go right to their criteria, it's okay with me. So we're looking at the series. What are we doing when we look at it? Well, we're going to use the alternating series test because, after all, it is an alternating series. Only makes sense. So by the AST, we're going to apply the two criteria. Remember criteria one. What is going on with the limit as n approaches infinity of the non-alternating component? Well, I believe we just talked about this, if I remember correctly, because we indirectly used the nth term test. We said that this numerator is growing much faster than that denominator, especially by the time by the time k gets to be 4, I think it's a tie. They're both 14. You can double check that. But when k is 5, we've got a 32 on top and a 25 on bottom. And that just will tend to, the gap will just widen as k moves beyond that value of 5. So there is no question that this is approaching infinity. Hey, infinity is not equal to 0. So by the nth term, uh, or uh, I'm not by the nth term test, but by the fact that this limit 
is something other than zero, that means we've got divergent behavior according to the alternating series test. And then what that means is that this original series in the problem diverges. And that's how it works, guys. Again, I can't emphasize enough the, the use of the flow charts. I haven't used them very long, but I will tell you this, the moment that I first introduced these to my students not so long ago, their level of understanding of absolute versus conditional convergence was magnified just 10 times over. And this wasn't a big issue. So I hope that this helps out a little bit. And as always, keep studying, and we'll see you at the next video.